All right. Oh, my God. Call the meeting. Does it get? No, we're not. Yeah, we are going to call the meeting. I just realized Mr. McNeil is in. We're going to call the meeting to order at 6.04. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. It's also uh, accessible via Zoom, and therefore the town is recording the meeting via Zoom. If you Those could, would like you to unmute your microphone. You can press star six to unmute. If you could <laughs> please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. You are unmuted. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our first order of business is public comment. Do we have anyone here in person or joining us? Um, joining us remotely that wishes to speak in public comment. Do you want me to? Sure, please step to the podium if you can. No, I'm not on this. <laughs> no, okay, all right. What? I still know if you want me to close this. Excuse, we're excuse? We're not here yet. No, I, I know, I, would, I, I thought she was coming to speak in public comment, okay. Do we have anyone, Mr. Gilberto? I don't see anybody, I'm gonna check the Zoom, Madam Chair. Okay, all set? All right, uh, I don't see anyone coming forward either. So we'll move on to board member reports. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, let's see. Just, uh, Hillview uh, Commission has been uh, talking with two different parties in relation to uh, potential use for the facility, uh, ongoing discussions uh, with, with both parties at this particular point in time. The board is well aware uh, it's been a challenge to operate function hall there, and we've had two prior vendors who have uh, expressed a lack of interest and desire to actually close down the park. So uh, they're working diligently, working with two different parties at this particular point in time. Hope to have something to uh, offer the administrator at some point, uh, enter into some sort of uh, license agreement with somebody uh, in the hopefully not too distant future. Obviously, the goal is to have. Someone in the facility for golf season to help service the golf things and the golfers. It was a whole, it's been a challenge. The physical life itself is a challenge, but uh, just business environment itself has been very challenging. So uh, they've been actively engaged in the subcommittee. Uh, the commission has discussed it at length the last couple of meetings. Uh, so we hope to have something to report back uh, in short order. Uh, Board of Health, obviously, uh, very active still. And uh, just today's numbers, the last three days, almost 11,200 cases across Massachusetts for three days. Um, numbers are climbing and going up. Uh, they're monitoring it. Uh, I have not had an opportunity. I put a call in today, uh, but I can get a call back as to where our numbers are right now over the last two weeks. But it's been uh, obviously a spike, just like everywhere else across the Commonwealth. So people just need to uh, understand that uh, well, we have a new variant out there, and it may be here, one, two cases identified, it's still the Delta variant that's, uh, that's having a significant impact. We just got off the Thanksgiving holiday, and lots of gathering. The numbers are indicative, as you can see, almost a week and a half, two weeks out, uh, over 11,000 cases in three days. So um, everybody should be cautious, protect one another, wear your masks. Um, whether anything else is coming down the road, obviously the, the governor has indicated nothing at this particular point in time. We're going to continue to monitor it, what a health safe thing. Uh, they're in constant consultation with the uh, State Department of Public Health. Uh, the um, Water Wastewater Subcommittee, uh, we have uh, Mr. Parisi, uh, and again, he can do it far better than I. I'd just like to have him give the board a quick update as to what he sent out and request for proposals uh, and the timelines associated. Uh, Joe, if you would. Sure. Um, so just you recently. You might want to just sit up. I'm sorry. Um, sir, if you could just come up to the Yeah, just up to the mic. But this is significant uh, as far as what's happening right now. So. Yeah, so uh, about uh, a week or so ago, I sent out a request for proposals on the um, <clears throat> proposed municipal uh, wastewater system. And uh, to do an assessment, a study of the system, what it would um, bring as far as uh, new growth to the town and also 
what the uh, financial aspects of the, of the cost of the project and what the, um, the benefit issuance would be for it. Um, so all of that information is something that uh, we hope to get, you know, compiled and use at town meeting, either maybe both this June and again in October. Okay. And where can that um, request be found? Uh, so it, uh, it can be emailed um, through me by contacting me at jparisi at northburningma.gov and I'll send that electronically to anybody who's looking for the proposal. But it's also and the proposal is I do back uh, December 20th, I believe. Um, so any proposer, you know, must have, you know, uh, a document sent in by that date by 3 p.m. And also uh, there is a pre-bid meeting uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock in this room. For anybody that has questions uh, that they propose, they'll be in this room tomorrow basically asking them and I'll provide an answer to their questions within a, a day or two. Okay, thank you for the okay. update. Does anyone have any questions while well, Mr. Parisi's? We're going to have you right back. But does anyone have any questions? All set? Yep. Good. All thank set. you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Yeah. Parisi. All set? All set. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Walner. Yeah, um, just briefly, the uh, Forest Committee, um, we've been trying to work on making the Swan Pond more accessible. Um, it's been really hard to find consultants who can help us look at that in a big picture. Uh, road and try to professionalize it, make it more accessible. We finally found someone uh, this last week down in Sandwich, uh, Massachusetts, and they're going to come up on Friday and do a walk around uh, to give us a first look on doing that. Of course, I would have to go to out to bid for someone to find it, but finding a consultant to do that work is just not accessible. It has not been we have not been able to find them. And the goal is to uh, make Swan Pond accessible to all the community and do it in a professional way that hasn't been done before. So that's that's what's going on with the Forest Committee. Um, with the age friendly, I, I was on vacation that I've been taking. I have my own work job to take care of as well. But um, as I mentioned last time, the board has been very supportive of making progress towards the age friendly. We're already taking some steps. My goal is by our strategic meeting uh, in January is to have another set of complete plans so that we can continue to make progress. And meanwhile, people have been contacting me asking to see the uh, video on NorCam. Uh, so I've been sending out links and it's been a nice steady stream of uh, people who've been asking for it. So Phil, I gotta talk to you about how we find that on Facebook because I sent somebody there and they couldn't find it. So anyways, we'll work that out. Um, and then one other thing, whoever put up the menorah on the common, uh, thanks for doing that. About 25, 30 people showed up on Saturday for just kind of an informal get together. And uh, it was nice to have it on the common. <coughs> Uh, lights weren't on, so I just went and pressed the GF5 button and the thing turned on and we were all good. So it was like 25 people showed up. I think it'll probably be in the paper, but it was uh, great. However, that got arranged. I don't know how that happened. TBW. Great, great job. That was they very much appreciated. Job. People really appreciate it. They had uh, donuts and hot shopping and things like that. It was really, it's the first time it's ever happened. So thanks for making, uh, you know, a, another first in the town. Good. Oh, nice. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Studo. Go Patriots. Mrs. <laughs> Gonzalez. I'm good for tonight, thank you. All right, and, and I am as well. So we're going to move on to our next order of business, which is to review the report on the four intersections. Um, so, Hello. how are you? Good. If we can have everyone I, who's going to speak on this come up to microphones and um, just state your name for the records purposes. And we have a we obviously have a public information presentation. Madam Chair, through you, Mr. Gilberto. For the board members, so we're going to go through a PowerPoint presentation here. It's the same um, presentation that is actually in your meeting packet as well uh, for board members who want to follow along there. Um, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's page 19 of your packet. So, excuse me, 17. 17. I'm sorry. Are you? I'm the primary I'm presenter, I guess, as chair. So. Just one second, because I want to. Can is there a microphone over there? Yeah, I'm going to the table. Is that? Can you? Are you able to? Is there one up at the podium? Um, <laughs> Mr. Gilberto. Oh, oh, you can. That one is to pick up the podium. I just think because it's hard to hear what's in the so. 
And we may have people joining us virtually too. So thank you. Liz, you can Thanks, send me a message to take the mask on the car okay. if you'd like. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> um, board. Uh, my name is Liz Oldman. I'm the Director of Transportation Planning for TDC. We were retained by the town um, to um, do some safety and operations analysis at four intersections of interest throughout the town. We were um, hired to evaluate the existing challenges and opportunities and provide recommendations for four intersections. Haverhill and Chestnut, Park Street and Central Street, Central Street and North Street, and Park, Concord, and Southwood Road. These were decided by number of crashes, public concerns that were recorded, um, safety concerns, operational concerns, and so these four intersections bubbled up to be studied. So for all intersections, the data that was collected included items on the slide, existing geometry, site distance from the side street approaches, and along the main line, um, existing speed regulations filed with MassDOT, um, vehicular and pedestrian volumes, operational observations, and crash history from the North Reading Police Department. The analysis performed for each intersection include left turn lane warrants, always stop warrants, traffic signal warrants, and those, those in particular are not just the volume warrants, but we look at the intersection holistically to make sure that we understand where it's best to put an always stop or a traffic signal. We also look at capacity of the intersection, how it's operating, and queue lengths. Is there any questions on our process so far? Anybody have any questions? No. Not so far. Okay. <laughs> the first intersection is Haverhill Street and Chestnut Street. Um, I'm sure you're familiar. Chestnut Street is stopped on the two approaches, and Haverhill Street is um, at the main line and it is a free flowing um, roadway through the intersection. Today's challenges include offset alignment. Um, restricted site distances to the south on both sides of Chestnut Street. Um, the visibility of the flasher is a little restricted on from both approaches of Chestnut Street. And there are extensive vehicle delays. Um, all of these combine to make this intersection a high crash location. This is one of, I think it's the only high crash location designated in the town. There are 32 crashes in five years. It's designated by the, um, the planning organization. <laughs> These crashes are all, 91% are angled crashes, which are people coming out of Chestnut Street and getting hit by vehicles, through vehicles on Haverhill Street. Um, if you're not familiar with the intersection, here's a couple of shots. I could go through them all, but I, I feel like I want to be respectful of your time. So, a... Um, traffic signal volume warrant is met at this intersection and that is our ultimate recommendation in this location in, a, in accordance with modifying curb lines to separate and tee up the approaches, remove median islands that are really not necessary and are confusing. The signal will enable us to formalize pedestrian crossings. This is one of the locations that had a, a, some pedestrians during the hours that we that we took um, counts. Not a, t a lot, but there was a fair number. Um, so formalizing that crossing and yeah, the intersection that um, will greatly improve in operations. So the side street approaches will come off of a level of service F and it will mitigate the angle crashes. Liz, may I just stop you there to see if any of the members have any? Okay, questions by the members. None? So, Mr. No, no, O'Leary. No, no, so, so you are suggesting putting in full signalization. Correct. And it's not just a time thing, it's all day long. All day long. Okay. Um, it meets the eight hour vehicle warrants at this intersection, which is what the MassDOT 
is like that primary recommended warrant. So this would be a full-time traffic signal. Okay, and I did see something in the report about New Street. You're also suggesting a change in uh, maybe a one-way directional there in relation to people traveling northbound on North Street not being able to take New Street to cut Chestnut? We did look into that, and we decided ultimately that um, rerouting the trucks into through this intersection is probably not our best um, suggestion. So we're keeping the... Uh, I just wanted to make, in the report we went through that analysis of making it a one-way kind of circulation around the triangle, but ultimately we decided that um, the, the trucks, there's a lot, a significant number of trucks that come southbound that make that right turn. I wouldn't want to, um, and then they come back up and make the left onto new. Um, I don't want to bring them through this intersection, which is already of concern. I mean, there were suggestions years ago of restricting New Street and Chestnut Street, I mean, other than, you know, we have Moynihan Lumber there in our own DBW yard, you know, uh, but there was a, strong suggestions where to reroute most everybody else all the way down to the center of town and make them take a left on 62 uh, to get them off of that uh, residential area and that straight away uh, with the heavy traffic and heavy trucks going through there. Any consideration? Um, no, I did not look at re, um, redistributing the truck traffic, but the, the um, concern with this intersection was really the sight distances, and so adding a new traffic signal here will improve the safety of the Chestnut Street approach coming from the west um, and allow people to make that left turn a little more easily than trying to push them down to the point of the triangle. Could I just ask a general question, Madam Chair, through you? Um, as far as Haverhill Street, Route 62, and even Chestnut Street, um, how much authority does the local board have, or police department, in establishing uh, restrictions, speed limits, and all the rest, and how much of it is county or state driven? Speed limits are on file with Regulatory speed limits are on file with MassDOT. So in order to um, install, institute a new speed limit or change an existing speed limit, you have to perform an engineering study by MassDOT's regulations and then apply to the state. Um, and then this board would then accept that new regulation and then MassDOT would accept it as well. Um, and that's how you get the, the formal speed regulations. Everything else is, um, statutory, like in the background, um, uh, thickly settled is 30 miles an hour, everywhere else is 40 miles an hour, that's just the, the governing speed limit. Um, so the MassDOT still requires an 85th percentile speed, so if your vehicle, if your posted speed limit is 35 and most people are going 35 to 38 miles an hour, MassDOT won't allow you to just drop that speed limit. So um, you have more authority on operations and um, geometric improvements, really, than stop than um, speed limits. But again, as far as uh, traffic restrictions, specific, specifically truck restrictions, um, are any of these roads governed by MassDOT as opposed to us? Um, well, truck restrictions are also governed by MassDOT um, to be official. I mean. Um, that if you put up a truck restriction sign and there's no restriction filed with the state, then the, you can't really, you, then you have no way to enforce it if, a, if the trucks were to go down there. Um, so I did not specifically look at truck restrictions uh, on Haverhill Street. So um, I'm not so much concerned with Haverhill Street as I am with, you know, New and Chestnut, but. Okay. To, all okay. right, so, but that wasn't really the focus of this study, but I think in terms of your question, it seemed like you were saying, do we, we're allowed to put the traffic signal in, it, even though this isn't, that, that seemed to be where I thought you were directing your inquiry, uh, not on different other streets, but, so, because this is a recommendation and because it, the, the study appears to have gone through, you know, all the points of consideration and 
how many accidents and things like that, that should be sufficient evidence to any state agency really that we have to go to for permission to do this if we even need to, to be able to put these, to make these modifications, right? You do not need state permission to put in this traffic signal. Thank you, that's great. Having the, um, having the warrants on the road, all the engineering study gives you all the backup that you would need. Okay, I think but the thing you're you talking about might require a different type of study, even just, just to, where are you gonna reroute the, well, no, that's, well, a, main, the, that, the that's a main report, throughway. Yeah, through part of the preliminary but, report included New Street, that's why I didn't see it addressed okay. here, that's all. Right. all Thank right. you. Okay, we have uh, another question from Mrs. Gonzalez. Yes. Hi. Uh, where exactly would that signal go? Is it going to be facing Chestnut or is it going to be Cave Road? It would, it would control all, all four, four legs of the intersection. So, um, you know. Because it like doesn't go standard. straight across, you know. It's, exactly. So, so how is that going to work? Uh, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so they would be a split phase traffic signal, so it would be a three-phase signal. Haverhill Street would go, then Haverhill Street would go red, and then eastbound um, eastbound would go, and then that would turn red, and then westbound would go. Okay. So it would be a three-phase signal. Okay, thank you. Kind of like it where Heavenly Donut is. Okay, yeah. That, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Just Miss, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wilder. Just the color coding, what is the difference between the green, what is the green and the dark green versus the faded out yellow, what is, what is that all supposed to signify? The faded yellow is new sidewalk. Okay. And the green is where you would get more green space back. Um, or oh. Asphalt would be removed. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you also calculate how much this is going to cost? Yeah, that's all at the end. I got a big price tag. All right. All <laughs> set for questions? Are we all, <laughs> right. Are we all good Move, moving forward? All right. Um, we did have an alternative here. This is the only one with a second alternative that doesn't implement the traffic signal. Um, it would just be some minor, uh, some minor adjustments to the side streets um, and an improvement to the overhead flasher. This is kind of would be a temporary condition um, if there was a funding concern for the traffic signal. Okay. Thank you. So next is. Park Street, which is Route 62 in this area, and Central Street. Park Street is the through street, Central Street is stopped, yeah. northbound and southbound. So today's challenges is not, well, not as bad as um, the previous intersection. There is some alignment issues here. Restricted sight distances to the west. Um, the northbound approach width makes the sight distances even worse. While there's somebody waiting to make a left turn, a person can sneak around on their right, which makes it harder for them to see to the right, which makes it harder for them to make their movement. So everybody gets frustrated. Um, the crosswalk is not in the best location for pedestrian visibility. We did have a number of pedestrians crossing this intersection during um, peak hours. And uh, there are delays on Central Street um, both northbound and southbound in the peak hours. Um, so our recommendations in um, at this intersection, we did look at multi-way stop to put an all-way stop. If we do that, Park Street is a disaster. Um, we get large queues on that road because it is the mainline roadway and the volumes are so much higher than Central Street. Um, it's not recommended operationally. The signal warrants are met nominally. So in the COVID condition, they're not met. In the COVID adjusted con condition, they are met. So this is more of a location that I would say, let's watch it and see um, if the, the warrants are met consistently in the future. Um, what we are recommending right now is to tighten up the northbound approach while still allowing school buses to get out of there. I know the school bus depot is to the south. Um, but to realign the northbound-southbound alignment as much as we can to make it a smooth movement across the intersection, um, shift the crosswalk, add some more signage, um, add a 
RRFB, a flashing warning beacon at the crosswalk to let motorists know that there are pedestrians crossing in that location and monitor this for a future signal. This improvement that we're proposing it, or recommending is um, would not preclude the installation of a traffic <coughs> signal in the future. Mr. Studo. I have a question. Could you have a could you have a traffic signal that's like peak hours would be a full like you know you know red, yellow, green, and then and it would just be off peak would be just flash. like uh, like a flash just because like depending on where it is like for example during the summer or whenever Ipswich River has a lot going on it's like get, getting on to Park Street from Central it's like the Thunderdome like I mean you really gotta you gotta fight especially after like a practice so is there something where that can be automatically I don't even know who does that I don't know if it's a ple like who adjusts that but is that something that would make sense um, normally we wouldn't do that unless okay. some places um, would do a flash in, in the night hours like overnight hours but during the day you would want to keep it as a consistent traffic signal operation that's what I meant like mm -hmm. could you do it where during the day it's a traffic signal like regular and then at night it becomes where you don't need it right um, normally I would say we would just um, design it to operate consistently all, okay. all the time Mrs. Gonzalez so you're not recommending a signal right now not right now <coughs> So I don't understand how it's going to, what is it you're going to do this? I live on that road. I've been watching it for <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> ever. Well, I'm just concerned that it doesn't meet the warrants with it, um, in the COVID condition. Yeah, so right. I need to have justification yeah. um, to, uh, so if you put in a traffic signal without the warrants being met and without a, without a judgment call or a backup and something happens, they could easily sue the town um, for a traffic signal that's not backed up by any warrants. Um, so what I would recommend is maybe in a year looking at this intersection again and um, seeing if a traffic signal is warranted once we're hopefully out of the COVID condition. So what is the recommendation you're making now? The recommendation to right now is to um, in the short term, narrow up the northbound approach, move the, um, the crosswalk, um, and add some additional signage, um, add a flashing beacon at the pedestrian crossing, um, just generally make the intersection as safe as, um, as possible, and up, um, open up some sight lines by bringing the, uh, the stop bars farther into the intersection which will enable us, enable um, increased sight distances along Park Street, which, um, which will make the intersection safer in the short term until a traffic signal is fully warranted. So is that things that you would have to do anyway if you were putting the signal in? Yes. Okay. So this would be like the short term, and then uh, when, we were con when we were certain that the warrants were met, we could just plop a I just didn't want to see spending money that didn't need to be spent if we're uh, eventually going to put a signal in. But that is something you'd do anyway before, if you were putting the signal in. Correct. All right. Thank you. Liz, I have a couple of questions. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry. Miss, I have a couple of questions. How many um, accidents have happened here, motor vehicle and pedestrian accidents in the past five years? This one is about average, which with 23 crashes in five years, no pedestrian crashes. And I, I'm, I'm actually not a gambling man, but I would gamble that I'm more worried about us not taking safety precautions here because the cars fly up the road. No one stops to let anyone out. It's so treacherous if you actually even do stop to allow people to get, get onto mm -hmm. Park Street. And people are going to get hit trying to cross over that. So I would say we should be more worried about not doing anything here than just waiting to see. And also, I think that it is your, does your work, does your work piggyback off of the other recommendations? Because it, it almost would calm the traffic based on your Chestnut Street mm -hmm. recommendation. If there's a light there perhaps that might alleviate some of that sort of the, the Park Street barreling down that road right. 
you know, because that's really quite close to the next section where people are trying to get in and out. Does y'all work piggyback off of it, or are you making this recommendation just looking at this intersection without any of those other considerations? We did look at this intersection kind of in a bubble, except for the fact that we know that there's signalized intersections pretty close on either side on Park Street. So, um, so I think, you know, additional improvements at um, Chestnut and Haverhill might have some positive impact on this intersection. Uh, so if you were to install a traffic signal here as well, we would want to coordinate with those two adjacent signals because they are so close. So it makes it just a, a little more tricky than um, the uh, Haverhill and Chestnut, which is a standalone traffic signal. And I just have one other question on this, and that's the beacon, the beacon, the warning beacon. Mm -hmm. I, I think I've seen these. I've seen them on um, the Fellsway in Medford. If someone's trying to cross across from the bus stop to get across that big, huge, they're these big flashing yellow lights across the crosswalk where you have to stop. You have to stop to let the pedestrian by? Is that what you mean um, by that? These are, the RFBs that I'm proposing is um, near Phillips, like near, on 28 near Phillips. Oh, yes. There's the, the yeah. flashing yellow, and um, you do have to stop if you're a, yeah. a, a motorist, yeah. but as soon as the pedestrians go, then you can proceed as a yes. motorist. Okay. Um, they just alert um, people to uh, motorists to that there's a pedestrian looking to cross and potentially crossing in that location. And you are required to stop? You are required to stop. And, and they'd be on both sides. And th there's Correct. also a lot of bi bicyclists that try to cross, come across, mm -hmm. and it's so dangerous there. It's just an accident, another accident. I mean, this happen. is so close. I mean, the adjusted volume, um, like I said, it, but we when we took the counts, it was in the um, it was in the spring, so we had to adjust the counts up quite a bit. Um, that's why I'd rather have like real solid, you know, non-COVID counts from maybe this coming spring or next fall before I recommended the installation of a traffic signal here. So this might be like next year. But at least we could do these other measures. Yes. Mrs. Gonzalez, I don't know if Mr. Mr. O'Leary had some questions that Mr. will go back get back to you, Mr. O'Leary. No, I, again, I, I also live in this area, so again, it's just certain times of the day that it's difficult traffic-wise. But you know, there's, there's a light at Ryers, there's a light at the high school. You know, this is if you're heading westbound. You know, and then there's a light at Freedom and Winter and Park. Right. You know, so if there's already three lights in what about a mile stretch? Right. About yes. a mile stretch. You know, so the so the warrants and the traffic count isn't going to change much because from Ryers, which is Haverhill Street, down to Freedom and Winter and Park, it's, it's going to be pretty much the same unless someone's going up Central or down Central, one or the other. But pretty much the same. So those warrants are going to be whatever they are. Mm -hmm. So they aren't going to change significantly, I wouldn't think. Um, and you come in the other direction, you have it at Kitties, you have it at Park and Twenty Eight, and down by. Uh, Coda's funeral home, and then you've got it in Park and Winter Street. So we have a lot of signalization going on affecting the traffic flow at this intersection. I mean, what, what I've found over the, over the years, again, it, it's certain times of day where, you know, it can be backed up from the high school all, almost all the way back to Central Street. I, I live off of Oakdale Road, which is the next one up, uh, heading towards the high school in Eastbound. Um, so, you know, I experience the same traffic flow trying to get in and out of the street. And certain times of the day, it's, 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 it's hectic. And again, the backup. Now, what you're suggesting here on Central Street is if you're heading northbound on Central, coming from it's a Driven Park area, you're suggesting narrowing them out there so that people can't tuck off to the right and bang a right and head east. Yes. You know, so that's going to back up the traffic a little bit more yeah. there, but it's also going to calm down the intersection. Correct. And then, the other way, what are you doing? Is, I mean, the sight lines looking westbound, when you're Central Street heading north, looking to the west, there's that rise over there, which is very difficult mm -hmm. to see. So if you signalize it, the, the likelihood of rear end collisions are probably pretty good unless you lower the road. Yes? 
No, I don't know. Um, I'm just I'm looking. I mean, I know the topography. You know, I, I, well, when we um, when we narrow the intersection map, it enables us to move the stop bar closer to the through travel way, right. so you get a longer sight distance to the west. And then we're also adding more signage for the eastbound approach. Um, excuse me. Um, so then, uh, and then just narrowing that approach, like I said, it will help um, the people make the movement across Central Street a little easier rather than kind of having a job. Yeah. And, and again, there's no doubt there needs some, to be some sort of signalization for the pedestrian and bicycle traffic, you know, cutting across 62 to get from the north across Central Street, um, or the north side of uh, Park Street. I mean, it, it's, it's treacherous and not enough people stop uh, to allow the pedestrians to go, and so some sort of signalization to you know push the button and let them get across safely is paramount in my, my estimation. But uh, as far as the rest of it, you know, we have a significant amount of signalization on 62 within a, a one mile stretch. Mm -hmm. I just don't see how that's going to you know other than allowing someone cutting across Central Street to get in and out easier. Exactly. Um, there's always a, there's always going to be a break in traffic anyway because of the other signalizations, mm -hmm. right? Right, right. I would have um, honestly looking at the intersections with the two the two signals are within a half mile of this intersection, a half mile on either side. Um, I would have expected the um, a better operation here because of the platooning vehicles. I don't know if those two signals are not. Um, uh, Coordinated—that's the word I'm looking for. Coordinated to kind of um, provide some gaps for this intersection. If you were to put a traffic signal here, you really have to co coordinate well, or you're going to wind up stopping at all three of those intersections within a mile of each other. So and how do we get the other two to be coordinated better? Because I think yeah. and I see the chief over here nodding his head. Right. So, <laughs> it can be done, but the what we've done with the high school is coordinated basically to the drop off and pick up times. That's coordinated with Park and Havel Street. It's not coordinated with Park and Freedom. Park and Freedom just runs on its own and you never have traffic back upstairs. It's been you know, really easy flowing, but as you know, the high school, there's right. a significant traffic problem between the high school, well, Central Street and Park and Havel Street from three to five every day. So, um, Certainly, this would add to it. I think um, having a traffic signal there. So, but it's it's certainly not coordinated. I think one point that the um, circle member um, Larry said was the traffic approaching from the west, coming towards the intersection of Park and Hagel Street. That was one of our concerns: is, is rear end collisions, especially if there's a tractor trailer coming, because there's not much distance between that. Once they can actually see this, the intersection, um, I think that you know during our discussions we, we talked about that as being a, a concern that we would have. Um, and other than some engineering on the roadway, there's not much you can do to improve that. Right. Other than lowering the speed limit, um, as you talk about, yeah. and lower the topography, lower the road, which is the yeah. whole I mean, yeah. Route 62 and, and the states involved. So you know that's that's you know we didn't talk about engineering on the roadway. No. Okay, Mr. O'Leary, are you all set? Mrs. Gonzalez. I'm going to go off of this study it, just because you just brought something up about the pedestrian walk and it made me think about stop and shop and I'll, I'll refer to you, Chief, about that would be a fantastic thing to have there. If that's, I don't know if that, if we can kind of get that uh, in here. 28? On 28 at the Sauber Shop, and we had a resident, a pedestrian, killed there during COVID. And I think we've had another death there, haven't we? Before? Um, just one. Just one more. Yeah. A pedestrian. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, the other one was up towards closer to Walmart. That was not at an intersection. Yeah. Oh. Okay. No, that wasn't at an intersection. But that would be, those, that pedestrian yellow flashing light thing, I think, would be fantastic. The only message you put the crosswalk. They redid that after that incident. Mass DOT came out and installed new 
a, a full clock swap, not the flashing ones. No, like it, it creates a red light there now. So oh, okay. The pedestrian to pass. Yep. All right. Thank you. I'll just add to the discussion that I think that the I think what you just pointed out is is paramount here. Even though there are those other traffic lights in place, this is really congested, really dangerous. It really is. Really an accident waiting to happen, more accident waiting to happen. So I'd, I'd advocate for a signal here. So what? You have to slow down and stop. It's, right. it's important. I think what's happening is with the with the traffic passing, breezing by there so quickly is because Maybe they, they had to stop at the light, so now they're barreling up to the next light, and that's unfortunate because someone is going to get killed at this intersection. And I hope it's not anyone, you know, anytime soon, but I also live in that area, and I travel at all, all, all points of the, the day and evening, and it's always treacherous, always treacherous to cross over from Ipswich to cross onto from Central. There's not a, there's no easy time. There really is no easy time of day for that. And that's in a car. And that's a heavy, heavy pedestrian and cyclist mm -hmm. area as well. There's a lot of kids. Right. There's a lot of kids in this area, so. Mr. Studo? And I'll just add, like, I'm not, I don't know yet what the right course is, but like one thing I'll say is that from, uh, you know, the topography coming in from Central, right? There, it is the human condition to misjudge and think you have just enough time to make it across as a car's coming this way. Not understanding that if, I mean, it really does come into an acceleration thing, but I see it like on the way here today, I was just doing 25, which is not that fast, you know, when I was coming back. And a car made this decision and I'm thinking, like, the driver didn't understand that if I was even going maybe like five miles an hour, I would have hit them because it just, I think people overestimate how quick they can get to the other side, not realizing that there's a million things starting from, not all cars are race cars, from darting over. So I'll just add that like, I think, I don't know if the decline coming in from Central is causing, you know, I just, I see more of this because of how the road is. Is that going east to west or? Central, no, north central's north south. North south. So going from south, yeah. like if I was, you know, going down this way, I feel like there's more people attempting yeah. that this way than the other way. And I don't know if it's yeah. because they're looking down in a decline versus an incline, but I don't know if there's something where maybe it's not equal. Because I think more of the accidents waiting to happen come from people heading south on that decline than north. So I don't know if we can differentiate that when we make a decision. Yeah. Does anybody else think that? I, I, I don't know. We're it's hard through. because of the topography. How, yeah. do you, how What are we supposed to do? Redo the road like that? No, it, no, you I'm know, Flatten it out? I mean, it's almost impossible. Is there impossible. a way to do um, like an advanced signal ahead, like signal red ahead signage or something like that? Um, but uh, we would really want to make sure that we understood the geometry. We did not do survey out here um, at this point to understand the exact grading or anything like that. So um, again, we're recommending this one in a two, kind of a two-step process because Haverhill and Chestnut is such a high crash location. We felt that the traffic signal needed to kind of go in there immediately, whereas this one um, could maybe hold off a little. Is there a potential, excuse me, Madam Chair, just a potential again to, to assist with the signalization or synchronization or whatever you call it uh, yeah. with, with, with winter and winter? I know it's further away, a little further away, and, and I know it's the high school that, that causes uh, at the peak times you know, a significant amount of traffic uh, to give the break, you know, to give, the, to give a coordinated break at, at Central and, and Park Street. I mean, to, to me, that would would assist and go a long way doing it. And again, to, again, I travel to seven days a week, multiple times a day. Uh, I've been here my whole life, so um, yeah, it, it's a bad intersection. But again, to me, I don't think we need signalization half a mile apart all the way down 62 either. I don't think that's the solution, you know? And I, and I think if we can better coordinate the lights and give people a break, and again, we can cut, call out that little extra lane to get people to cut onto 62 and hold things up a little bit more, you know, that would go a long way. To, to me, it's, it's the pedestrian crossing and children and 
pedestrians that, that's really at risk. I mean, obviously it's a bad intersection, but you know, I, I don't want signalization all the way down 62. I, to me, it, it just doesn't, we can do a better job with what we have to make it work better, but how do we do that? And we can, we can look at the signalization um, um, on either side when we look at, um, when we do the geometric changes here, we can say, oh, well, let's look at the two adjacent signals and how can we improve the gapping at this intersection. It, it, can you do it from a timing standpoint? Because again, it's, it's at, the, it's at yeah. the peaks when the, when the schools are coming and going that it has the most amount of impact here in this intersection. And it, with no coordination from Winter Street, there's just a free run happenstance as to when the light changes and it flows through. Well, school peaks are hard because it's such a short amount of time. Right. Right, so you're gonna, a school peak is going to be terrible for a half an hour or 45 minutes or whatever, but then it clears out and then you kind of want this intersection and the, the signalization um, coordination to function all the rest of the time. Right, but again, and again, even at peak, peak, you know, rush hour, you know, five, six o'clock. Right. Th that's another time the morning, frame there that, that's that, that's critical at this intersection, where there isn't the coordination between the signals a half a mile apart, mm -hmm. um, and you can't get a, can't get across, you know, or you can't get out. So it's um, it's so it's not just the school. So I, I misspoke. It, it is, you know, at the peak rush hours, you know, in the morning, and then late afternoon, right. where we experience the, the biggest problems here. And again, without the coordination of the lights, I think it could be assisted. Okay, let's um, just let Chief, Chief Murphy answer, if he can uh, maybe add some contribution so, to that one. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the high school, Route 62 has priorities after school's out of session. So the only time the light would signal is if somebody came up to the stop line from the high school. That would be the only time it would actually change. As far as winter and freedom go, the problem with that intersection is, is I think the flow from Park Street and Winter Street is pretty even. So I wouldn't know which one to, to slow down because I think that both going to provide the same amount of traffic. So that would be a tricky one. Um, but that one, I believe, is further away from the intersection, and a lot of people would take a right to go down Chestnut Street, so we're losing a lot of that traffic there, too. Um, I guess the, the concern is more the tractor trailers coming on Route 62, heading towards Middleton, being able to stop at 35 miles an hour mm -hmm. from um, Aldersgate to there. And they should be able to. We'd have to actually you know, measure the intersection based upon the speed. They should be able to, but driver hours, obviously, a great concern about. Just one comment about trying to get across the intersection. A lot of what we've seen during our investigation is the panic. People going into the intersection and either stopping or panicking and making the wrong turn. That's, we've had several crashes into the home that's across the um, right. intersection. It was driver error, but it, it was more of a driver error after they panicked because they didn't know whether to go or to stop. They, they went to go, the, they see a car coming, and then they just panic and you know and hit the gas or hit the brake, and, and that's where the accidents occur. So I think at least improving by pushing the stop line ahead a little bit and, and narrowing it is going to help. But I think we'd like to see yeah. signal lights there too as the least department because I think it's the safest. Um, but we, you know, our biggest intersection for access is Park, Park Main Street, which has signal lights. So that's the, you know, we have a majority of our accidents there. So, um, you know, I don't know that it's going to be the, you know, the end all be all, but it certainly would help. It's definitely a call to action that you dri even drivers panicking at that intersection. That, should, sure. that shouldn't be. So it's yeah, a call. Yeah, I mean, this is why we're it's all here. It's a call yeah. to action. Okay, I know we have it's oh, a game of chicken, chicken Mr. Walnut. Just a very quick I'm sorry, Mr. Walnut. We haven't talked about like if you're saying what I think I heard the chief say is that there's you know there's speed coming from Park Street from Maine and here. You know, they have those divots in the road that like, you know, cause vibration on your car, it certainly wakes you up. It does every time I hit one. Um, it, it, could we do that even just intermittently to slow that down so people are and I know everybody will hit it, but if you're not familiar with it it would 
would wake you up that something's coming up? You could, they're loud. Um, so I don't oh. know what the, what the okay. resident um, population is on that, south, on that side of the road. I'd have to take a look, but um, you'd have to really, especially tractor trailers going yeah. on, yeah. Yeah. they're very loud. Okay. Um, so for adjacent um, uh, residents, you'd really want to get their buy-in on that. Um, we are suggesting to clear a little bit more of that um, southwest corner to give a little bit more sight distance along there as well within the right of way. So um, that will help as well in the short term. Okay. Thank you. I know you have a few more, right? I have two studied. more I'll try and, um, just, No, it's great. It's a, it's a good dialogue. It's something we've been waiting to, mm -hmm. to discuss for a long time. So. so the third is Central and North. Again, Central Street is stop condition and um, North Street is the through street. Um, the cons major concern at this intersection is the crest hill immediately to the west of the intersection, which significantly restricts sight lines to the west. Um, the intersection alignment is just slightly offset, but not a lot. There is a crosswalk um, there for the sidewalk on the north side of North Street. And then the wide intersection of Yulee Park and Poultry Farm Road, just as you're coming over that crest going eastbound, there's this wide open road, people just come down and start going much faster after they hit the crest. They don't even look at Central Street, they just see this big open intersection in the, in the front of them. So this is, that's one really of the challenges at this intersection. The safety improvements that we are recommending here. Talk about a panic intersection. Yeah, especially if you're walking. Right. I don't know why that thing is still there. Um, so especially we. Especially in the winter. The winter yeah. too. Looked at it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Good. We're just saying winter time and you know yeah. ice and snow and everything. Oh, thank you. The sorry about that. We're apologize. But. <laughs> the um, multi-way stop volume warrants and the traffic signal volume warrants are not met here. And really, I would not recommend a traffic, a traffic signal or an all-way stop here because of that crest intersection. It really restricts the sight distance even more than down at Park Street. And there's not enough distance for somebody coming over that crest to stop behind um, somebody who's trying to stop at the stoplight or stopped at an all-way stop. I, I would really be very concerned to do any of either of those things at the, this intersection without a significant realignment of um, North Street to the west of this intersection. So what we are recommending is um, better or updated ADA ramps on the north approach, um, bringing the stop bars and stop signs in towards the travel way on the north and south approach and adding flasher to the warning signage to make that notification that there is an uh, intersection coming up more um, abrupt or not abrupt um, more noticeable for the vehicles coming eastbound update the flasher at the intersection with LED lights and then really reconfigure the Yuli Park Road poultry farm road intersection to narrow that roadway down and calm traffic speeds. Um, the narrower roadway will make, will definitely reduce the roadway width visually and make people not think that they can just speed through that location because it's so wide. Um, I think it'll help in both directions um, approaching the intersection. Um, yeah, so any questions, questions here? I have a question. Mrs. Gonzalez? I, I think that you, with this, you kind of nailed it. I think that you've taken care of a lot of the problems because I come out of Central quite a bit. I use that intersection a lot. And that corner, you almost have to almost go out to the road to be able to see to your right. And then people are trying to turn and you're out in the road. I mean, even if you're stopped, it's just such an issue. And um, I think you're correct with that 
wide because not only do, you, do they think if they don't know the area that they can speed up and then there's this shop corner that comes up. So, you know, one of the things I noticed coming from 28 to Central is there's, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I didn't see any speed limit signs until you get up almost to the Moose. There's no speed limit signs from 28 to that point. On like Hillview, on the, the or golf on course, North. on, North on, North. North. on North. North. Coming up to Central. I don't know if you noticed that, but there, um, like I said, I travel in a lot. There is a speed, there are speed regulations on North Street. It has a 30 mile an hour speed limit. Right, but you don't see that signage until yeah. you. That could probably be more. Yeah. Mr. Ms. Gonzalez, are you all set? Yes, thank you. Mr. Stewart. I just want to say, though, that the, the, the issue is, again, the topography, which you can't do anything. Right. When you're going downhill, it's really easy to start hitting 40. And sometimes, like, you look down and you're like, oh, my God, I'm doing 45. Like, it, it's like not somebody trying to, like, gun it, but, like, after the hill view, right, there's that big drop that's like a black yeah. diamond on a ski hill, and it's like, you know, I mean, in New Hampshire, it'd be a speed trap, but here in Mass., we're a little bit nicer, and you just have to try to be more, but I don't think, you know, what, what maybe make you more cognizant you're saying, if there was more of like, more signs saying you're going to Well, especially you're saying something flashing, so not just a sign, but something flashing really catching your attention. Right. On that northbound, on that eastbound approach, as you approach the intersection coming up the hill, there's a, it'll be a flashing sign there before saying, Pay attention, there's something coming up. Yeah. Because I feel like heading heading towards Main Street, you have to make an effort to start speeding, right? Because now you have all that downforce. So you're, I mean, if you're gunning it, you know you're going fast. But on the way down, is like where I encounter the issue mm -hmm. is like, you know, I got used to it when I almost like, you know, got hit really bad. So <laughs> you'll learn real quick. But now it's like, I can see how easily you're like, oh my God, I'm, I have to turn into Central and I'm doing 40. What's going on? Yeah. And like, so. Yeah, and if you're walking on that corner, mm -hmm. and it, Kate and I were walking over to the hill <laughs> we, view. We were running. For we the Thanksgiving. Running. Yeah, we were jogging. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I actually pulled her over, because I've walked that so many times with my dog. Yeah. I crossed the street to go and cross, because people come down and make that corner. Like you said, they're coming down fast. And if you're walking, they're going to take you out. You can't be seen. They can't really. see you. They can't and it's see wide. You. It's, wide. it's a wide space that's unprotected for pedestrians. Any other questions or comment on that one? All set? Okay. Uh, the last one was Park and Concord in Southwick. Um, currently, Concord Street northbound is a stop. Um, Park Street eastbound is a stop. Southwick is a stop. And Park Street westbound is free flowing. Mm -hmm. um, the challenges here are the alignment. It's confusing if you are not from this um, area and are approaching on Conquer Street in the dark and all of a sudden, oh, there's a stop sign. Hey, I don't, you know, it's, it's unusual and it's hard to, um, you know, it's hard to navigate if you're not familiar. However, there's, the, so the intersection alignment, the truck, there's a significant amount of trucks that make the Concord Street onto Park Street right turn. Um, there's restricted sight distances um, <coughs> on the Park Street eastbound approach, just the way that the intersection is aligned. Um, this is actually the lowest crash location, only 12 crashes in five years, and they were all rear ends, mostly from people like going and then stopping, and then somebody thought, thought that the person in front of them had gone, and then they, there was a rear end. Um, there's a lot of driver frustration at this intersection because there are long queues at the peak hours along Conquer Street and Park Street. So, the, at this intersection, the multi-way stop volume warrants are met I would not recommend it because Park Street would back up, maybe not to Route 28, but pretty close. It would be like a thousand foot queue if there was a stop sign on Park Street westbound. Um, the traffic signal volume warrants are met. However, 
I wouldn't recommend them installing a traffic signal in this location with the current geometry. So what I um, have proposed is a first step safety improvement. And what I hope this will do is improve the operations of the intersection that you won't need a traffic signal. So what we're proposing to do is tee up um, Park Street eastbound um, to make a more formal intersection, T intersection, keep the stop sign on Concord Street, but what, and keep the free flow on westbound Park Street, but that T up requires people to slow down and physically make the right turn. That will also, I think, help people to realize that they need to turn on their blinker and indicate that they're going to make that turn, which is, I think, why um, Park Street eastbound has so much trouble. They don't know if people are going straight. Yeah. They don't know if they're going to Concord Street. Nobody's indicating because they don't feel like they have to. Um, so this would make it feel more like a regular T intersection, where then I think that what it will do is um, make Park Street and um, Concord Street work better during the peak hours by making this intersection a little slower, a little more um, pulled in. It doesn't impede the trucks, um, adds some more sidewalk and adds some crossing places for pedestrians. Um, they'll have to maintain um, uh, school bus turning, but that will all be maintained as we get into design. So if this is implemented and it works without insul signal installation, Great. If not, this would not. This would be the geometry that I would recommend to install a traffic signal here. That would be an interesting change. Mm -hmm. uh, can you just tell us the? I'm sorry. The one before this, how many accidents in the one before this? The North Street and Central. Um, 23. Oh, five years, and this is 12. So this is actually the lowest. Questions on this one? Okay, Mr. Walner. Just doing. It looks really good. The only concern I have is if you're coming on Park Street. And you're coming up to that, it's probably just easier if I just point you. Mm -hmm. I come into here, if I'm trying to go here, this way, this seems like, I don't know how you get across there. It's, it would just be like um, a regular T intersection, but, so, but you'd be able to see the people coming on Park Street westbound better. And as well, the people coming on Concord Street and at that stop location. So it would just be like same as you would turn out of any left turn. Um, okay. Just it's it's not so busy there where you think you could get across okay. okay. Oh no, you know I think um, the, the I saw a lot of very good taking turns on the park and um, but it's just when you when nobody can tell what the people going westbound on Park okay. Street are going to do. People hesitate. They're like, I'm not sure. I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna go. So that's um, that's what I'm seeing there. I think with a better definition, it'll work better. Yeah. And the other thing I've always seen is I'm um, coming in Concord here. People just blow through that stop sign all right. the time. So something yeah. has to be kind of emphasized to get them to actually stop there. I right. guess. <laughs> right. And uh, right now the stop bar is a little faded. So I mean, we're adding. Um, we, uh, suggested some immediate implementation type things to the DPW that they can do off right you know within the next few weeks or a month. Yeah. So all right, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Miss <laughs> Mr. O'Leary. Yeah. You, if you're not gonna say it, I am. Go ahead, Mr. O'Leary. No, just <laughs> if you just go back again, you know it's that, a that, that, that configuration yeah. that you're suggesting here, you know, heading westbound on, on Park Street, you know, I the only thing I think of is uh, is um, Washington and L. You know, huh? By Orchard? Yeah, by Orchard yeah. Drive. If that silly little island that we have there, you know, that yeah. slows people down, you know, slows people down and makes people yeah. signal and makes people on Orchard Drive come halfway out of the Elm Street, but you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, this is a, and this is heavily traveled. I mean, are the warrants here, as busy as they are on 62, are pretty close? They're, um, they're pretty close. They're, yeah. about, they're about the same for the, yeah. the warrants. But it, again. I, I don't. I don't see how this improves the sight line. Again, I, maybe you'll get a few more people signaling to go Park Street West. Maybe you'll get a few more, but which will then add a little more certainty if you're coming from Park Street West and heading east. But now you have to jog around it in order to <coughs> continue to head east on Park Street. I, 
it, 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 you're right, people do take turns at Concord and Park, you know, they, they do stop, say, okay, go ahead. That's very courteous of them. But someone from coming westbound is just flying through anyway, cut them off, and the poor people on Southwick Road are just sitting there being patient. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that little jog is, is part of the solution or not. I, I guess I haven't, in, as far as, the, do we own enough land at that corner where we can actually reconfigure that, uh, that portion of the intersection? At Concord and Park Street? That's all public right away, the whole T. It, it drops off a little bit. I pulled a few cars out of there over the years. Um, <laughs> when I was in the tone business. Um, this, um, the, that curve on that northeast corner of Park Street, that's it might have wind up widening out a little bit more. Um, so it's not quite which, so which much. Which doesn't solve necessarily gone. what you're looking to solve as far as getting, getting people to signal to continue on to Park Street West. but. Correct, and slow them down on that movement. So we're not inhibiting their, their movement, it's just slowing them down a little bit. Okay, Mr. No. Studo, uh, I'll just add to that though. I just, this, I'm not bought into this one because if you're on park, you really, and you're negotiating park, you have the right of way to go either continue straight down right. park or put your blinker on and go on to Concord. And this is disruptive of that. That's really one of the, it seems to be one of the visually easiest, that's not to say people are driving it appropriately, but visually that's the easiest thing. And whoever is pulling out of, wait a minute, park is west to east, right? Right. We're doing west pulling to east. Out of pull, east. Whoever's traveling east along park has to just wait. Whoever's traveling east from Concord has to wait. So visually, you're really, this, at least this recommendation to me doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of making that little cutout. It would appear that you're making the right of way onto Concord Street rather than Park Street straight across, straight yeah. through. But right now, it's, you know, you have the right of way as the chair said, you know, to go straight Park Street. Right. You know, and, but if I'm going, going Concord Park Street, I put my left signal on yes. to let them know I'm going. Yeah. But if I'm going Park Street, I don't use my signal, I'm just going straight ahead. Uh, yeah, kind of that. that so, one, so now that's this the appears thing. to be changing the, yeah. the the configuration of the right of way. You know, who, what what route are you taking well, onto Concord Street? I think that I think the the problem is though is that Concord gets so backed up. That's where you have to give more flow. Right. You have to give more flow on Concord. It's not part that gets backed up. It's Concord. Oh, I mean, I've heard more from residents, Park Street West residents frustration at this intersection yeah, trying, to trying, out, trying to get out, out. heading east eastbound yeah yeah you know Concord Street backs up it's a, that's going to continue to back up that means people are using the stop sign that's not a bad thing you know that the backup on Concord Street is the, the volume of traffic yeah. and people stopping at the stop sign that's okay you know that slows it down and everybody's taking their turn it's okay. most of the frustration that I'm hearing are from people who live from yeah. Park Street West heading east and Southwick and so trying to go they can't get either out. direction you especially know. during school hours you yeah. know school well, school it's time rush hours rush it's hours tough. it's tough yeah. but yeah I, most of the the concern i've heard over the years again is coming from park street west heading east mm -hmm. and trying to get out of that intersection mm -hmm. or into the intersection to go wherever you're going to go mm -hmm. you know uh, mm -hmm. particularly if you're heading east mm -hmm. maybe for this one it would be to have some signaling that's saying intersection because everybody that lives here knows this one it's people that are trying to negotiate it that aren't from around here i think uh, i might be wrong on that i wish mr kelleher were present tonight because he lives just <laughs> west of this whole intersection he's rather vocal uh, but um the rest of it i think with definitely with the construction of the ramps and uh and you are rec making a recommendation to Put more signs and also to put to keep keep an eye on it basically. Right, right. I wouldn't put in a signal with that current free flow on park and then the free you know the current the current geometry. I wouldn't put a traffic signal in that. Um, I, I I wouldn't know how. <laughs> um, but if uh, if you were to put a traffic signal in in the future, you'd want an alignment like this. So it was very well defined of who was turning where and um, that it would be slowing people down on Park Street and requiring them to come through the intersection and 
physically make a right turn as opposed to a through movement. So, um, what about a signaling such as what is on north and north and central with a, just a blinking yellow light to alert oncoming traffic? That they, I mean, and I don't. This is there's a lot of residents here too, but right. what about something of that nature that could just um, alert? You know? Yeah, a flasher could. Um, is not you don't you don't need a warrant analysis for a flasher. It's just so you can put it in um, and and supplement your two way stop here. It's um, but excuse me, isn't it just the traffic flow primarily westbound on Park Street that's frustrating for the most part? Heading eastbound from West Park Street, you know Park Street West. There in, in, uh, in Southwick, trying to cut across. I mean, Concord Street. I think it works okay. Yeah. Concord Street. I mean, obviously, there's no accidents there, but but again, it's more frustration, waiting time. People get impatient, and the, the stop and go again is going to be a rear end collision because someone starts to go through and then gets whacked because they put their brake on again. Uh, the same thing with like Central Street. Same thing. You know, it, the traffic north south on Central Street again. It's nowhere close to what it is east west on Park Street as far as the warrants go, right? Just it's waiting time, it's safety, sight lines. This one here is just a little more uh, difficult. I don't think, again, you'll have to create, I don't know what the traffic count is and what the warrants are heading from West Park Street, Park Street West, mm -hmm. into this intersection. It's, right. it's not a big cut through for any place. It's the residents that are there, people live in Wilmington, maybe heading eastbound for some reason or another. But other than that, it's. Street onto Park Street is fairly heavy. Um, yeah, so no, I, that, that's heavy. No, that's yeah. heavy, but no doubt. Um, and then the volume on Park Street going in both directions is fairly heavy. Um, onto Park. Yeah. Um, I would say the Park Street eastbound is probably the lowest to pro, well, besides Southwood, which is very low, but um, Park Street eastbound would be lower than Concord and Park westbound. I think it was he was asking was how many people are coming into that intersection eastbound. eastbound. Oh. It, it, I, I, mean, I think I it's give you a lot. number, but it would take me a minute. A no, lot. no, 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 in the peak hours. All right. I think you're next. We do have to move along because we have a pot. Yes. This was a, this is a, another big important slide for us to, to get a sense from you of what the costs associated right. with this. These are all um, local design and approval and construction costs. Um, so no mass stop process. No, um, you know, nothing fancy as far as approval. We to take the survey, we do the design, um, we maybe hold another public meeting, um, we work with DPW, um, and um, that's where we get to with those four intersections. Um, the Haverhill Street, Chestnut Street is eligible for federal funding. However, if you do federal funding, you have to go through MassDOT to get the federal funding, and that opens you up to bike lanes and sidewalks and um, that $600,000 goes to $1.2 million, and it's um, a much, much bigger, longer um, approval process and a bigger um, intersection. If, the, if you use local money, then, um, then it can be done in a quicker time frame. But how much, what's the level of reimbursement? If you have to spend one point two to get it done to the standards, what's the level of reimbursement? You would um, go through the TIP project process and um, get, it would all be funded by MassDOT through um, the Federal uh, Highway Safety Improvement Project, HSIP, because it's a high crash location. Um, but then um, you have to meet MassDOT standards for everything. And then so it takes like five or seven years um, to get on the process and get that money in. Um, it's just a longer process. Um, something that we are considering um, with DPW for Route 28, you know, trying to get on the tip list for that, for, you know, the length of Route 28. Um, 
you know, a small intersection design goes from, like I said, a smaller thing to a large, much larger process. Um, and these are conservative numbers as far as construction goes, because things are a little out of control right now. But, um, you know, okay. I just wanted to be conservative for you. Does anyone have any other questions on this piece? Mr. Okay, Mr. One second, Mr. Gilberto. It looks like Mr. Waller's book. I can tell. <laughs> I'm just going to throw out a, a if you can indulge me for a second. Can you go back to the very first, uh, the first one of because uh, I think where everybody's pretty uncomfortable about is we don't really feel like we've addressed Park Street and Central, right? But there's also a cost thing. So you can go back to Haverhill and Chestnut for a second. All the way back. Yeah, all the way back, please. Just been kind of bugging me. And I'm sure I'm wrong, but I, I'm not that that I'm wrong. It just probably doesn't make any sense, but. If we were to put our dollars somewhere. If I were to recommend where your dollars would go, it would be here. Um, just because of the number of crashes yeah, and no, how I much you, you could mitigate, like how much bang you could get for your buck at this intersection. You'd mitigate crashes, you'd you know, well, operations. Here's going to be my point. Is, oh, isn't there a, right over here, there's a, there's a road that comes up. New Street. Yeah. New Street. What yeah. if we blocked all this and this becomes because the biggest problem is you have it's just too close together right there, there's not enough time to negotiate so if you somehow block this and put it down here you don't need signals here at all because then you and then the reason why I'm saying that is because if we're going to use local money then we could put our local money of an intersection into park the, the next one that we seem to be all really uncomfortable about. I'm just throwing that out. Yeah, it's just if it heading heading on Chestnut Street east west to Chestnut Street. So for those people that are traveling up coming up Chestnut Street and then heading over towards Linfield Peabody, that area, they're having to come down New Street, take a hard left up and then take a right on there. But if we could cut that and make that a much more Right. We'd yeah. have to change that intersection. Yeah. And yeah. that would give time for everybody to find their way and not run into each other, right? And yeah. it's not really that much more out of the way. Um, I, just, I, no, it's not. I don't know what the right of way is there in order to bring that into kind of a T intersection, which is what you would need to enable people to look to look to the yeah, left right, to right. make that left. So that's like a a, a whole other geometry camera worms down there. So you want to um, want to maybe make sure that there was sufficient right of way um, yeah. before we did something. It would just be a way for us, if we're going to do local money, it'd be, it might be a more efficient way of moving and be able to solve two problems at the same time. You don't have to have signals here, and you, and you put your money in signals where we're all feeling uncomfortable. Uh, just an idea. I, I understand what you're saying. We have someone that studied it, and I hear so much about studies here that don't get implemented. Even if we implemented these measures, and I understand it's an expenditure, but even if we implemented these recommended safety measures, there's nothing to stop us from modifying it. And some of these, I think if we, if we agreed to implement them, we may have to modify, especially the last one, if we implemented that entire yeah. thing. There's nothing to say that now oh, suddenly it's it's you know etched in stone that we we might not need to make a modification. But I feel like we we've, we've paid for this study. We've had someone really looking at it. We really need to start implementing some of these, especially the safety, the signage, and things like that. We need to spend money to do this. Yes. It's, it's part of just making it a safer community, especially for cyclists and pedestrians and and motorists. Yeah. But um, I would say what I'm hearing is that we're not sure if we can control the, di the, the traffic on that. I don't know if we're allowed to. That's what I'm hearing. And, and we would have to research and investigate that. And even this, if we, I mean, I don't know if we're going to move tonight to approve or what have you. I think this was just to review it. But even this, if we implement this, it's, we're not done just at, that, at this stage. There's a lot of planning and process that has to apply to this. Just feel like we study things, study things, study things, study things, study things. It goes on the shelf. We need to do something about no, I, these. I agree with doing you something. Know? Yeah. So but not I, I, not worry about did we didn't we didn't it's not permanent. It, if it has to change, it has to change yeah. down the line, yeah. you know. But if we hadn't thought about doing that, maybe just that was the scope, you know, of what you were looking at. 
it, it, it seems, you know, the more I've been thinking about, the more I thought that could potentially be a way to solve that problem without even having to put a signal there. And we did um, look at it, at, you know, I will say briefly because we were concerned about that site distance and um, that the geometry of that intersection to the south. And then again, you would have to make them, you know, all turn right or all turn left and then turn right. Um, I think during design, things change once you know the ge the, the slope and the geometry and you know and um, the actual right of way. Then things get tweaked and looked at. I mean. That's something we could look at again, but um, I know for certain that um, even if you didn't, um, even if you moved those people to the south, you still have the people coming westbound that have a significant um, delay and safety coming on the westbound approach, which the signal would um, continue to mitigate. Um, Probably still want to have something here for those that approach. All right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Two questions. The first is that for a uh, state uh, funded option, the town would be responsible for the entirety of the design cost. Correct. Um, and if I were to increase the estimate, presumably double your estimate, you added at $65,000, would it be double that? Um, for design, it, it's uh, instead of a two phase, it's like for for um, a local process, it's usually two submissions to the state. It's like it's five, and then there's a there's a pre twenty you know, pre ten percent scoping. Meeting. Like they they've made a process um, quite extensive at this point. It's probably at probably three times that for design for design. Yeah, only because you had indicated the cost was covered, but it's the construction cost that's covered, not Correct. the design cost. Correct. Apologies if that was okay. Then my second question, Madam Chair, through you is, uh, do you have any thoughts, and I know we didn't talk about this during our uh, pre-presentation discussions, but is this intersection a candidate for the so-called mass DOT type improvements? Are there concerns with regard to the width of the right-of-way? Um, I think it could be a candidate because of the designation. However, like I said, if you bring Masta into it, all of a sudden we're widening Haverhill Street to provide bike lanes um, uh, or a shared use path or something. Like, like the design gets different. Like it's not a condensed I understand. Um, thing. So um, did that answer your question? It, it did. It, are we talking about, you know, bike lane just in the intersection? Or are we not talking about a bike lane that goes yeah. up to Park Street, for example? But they might say, take it down to New Street and you know include that intersection. They might say, take it over, you know, take the improvements over to Chestnut Street, you know, down Chestnut Street to New Street. They might, you know, just blow out the whole, um, the whole improvement to, um, to make it a, um, a more com comprehensive improvement for bicycles and pedestrians, which is what their ultimate goal is. Okay. Me, didn't Reading do something though on Haverhill Street uh, not too long ago in relation to, you wouldn't notice it, but I think some bike lane, bike lane improvements. They, they, they certainly toyed with playing with the speed limit there mm -hmm. and changed their mind rather quickly. But I, but I, I thought they, uh, they did something with bike lanes. And again, it, the, the road isn't wide enough to, to handle it all, but um, but I think they did. So they again, Mass DOT may just say take it down to the Reading line to help join up with what the improvements have already taken place in Reading. Um, but are you you're not aware of what Reading has done? No. No, I don't know. Okay. I would say I don't believe on Gabriel Street there's bike lanes past the town line. Uh, they Reading? did a lot on 28, and on Gabriel Street they changed the sign internally, and then Mass DOT had looked at it and told them that. Could have changed the speed on the sign there, so they had to backtrack on that piece. I think there is a bike lane. There's there a part of Haverhill Street. There's signage, but they didn't. Yeah. They didn't. There's no mark. They didn't mark it out. Yeah. They did mark out a rotary over there with all different kinds of paints and lines and dots and things, and that's that, that's entertaining to try to get around that. Thing, but. So, any other questions? 
We're all set. Thank you so much for this this presentation. It was excellent. Well, thank so you helpful. For having me. Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. One set. You might have one more question, Mr. Gilbert. Well, I was only going to add, Madam Chair. I believe the town engineer has submitted a capital improvement request to the capital improvement planning committee for the amount of money that's been identified. We don't know whether it will be able to be funded in its entirety. Um, I can tell you that there is some additional design work for which we have some funding from the state. Um, and that leads me to first acknowledge uh, Representative Brad Jones and Senator Bruce Tarr, who obtained a state budget earmark two fiscal years ago, which paid for this study, of course, so it did not cost the town money to do this study. <coughs> there is a second $50,000 appropriation in this current fiscal year's budget for which we can apply towards design. So um, you know, we'll work that out through the capital improvement planning process, how that relates to what we have. And the third thing is, I believe there are signs that, if not on order, they've actually been delivered for those uh, very interim improvements to make safety improvements to these intersections. And uh, I know DPW was hoping to install them as soon as this week, although I know the weather may not cooperate now. Sure, so as part of this study here, <coughs> we took these recommendations and pulled out as many signs as we could that would help the current situation of the current intersections. And we ordered those signs already. We got those signs delivered. And we're in the process of dig safing each location, installing new holes, and then installing the signs in the next, in the next week or two. Fantastic. That's great. So regardless of whether decisions are made yeah. this evening, which we were not seeking, we are moving forward with requesting funding and taking interim steps. Fantastic. <coughs> All right. Thank you so much for um, being here. <coughs> and um, helping out with this. And I don't know if there's anything else you think. No, I, just, I think we've, we've um, vetted this out. This team yeah. met many times on this, but we were able to give our input, and um, we're, we're happy with what was presented today. I, too, you know, the intersection of Honkin and Park Street wasn't a priority for us, um, but you know, we understand there's been some complaints regarding delays in, in getting onto the roadway, which I can understand. But, um, from a safety perspective, we just don't see that as a, as a major concern. Yeah. So. But we support the, um, the presentation. Well, thank you to the team. Thanks for all being here to, to, you know, answer questions. And thanks for implementing. That's the key to all of this, really. This is a waste if we don't actually implement. So thank you for doing that, too. Thank you. All set? Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. And we're going to move on to our next order of business, which is the Common Victualers License Application for Nick's Place, 6 Washington Street. And if you could come to the table and identify yourselves. Hi, I'm Kathleen Monaco. I'm a research safely. I'm a food service consultant. And I am currently helping them with the permitting process um, and trying to get them open as soon as possible. And I am with the general manager, Nikki Sani, and um, we're here for the common fit license. And I'm sorry, can you introduce yeah, yourself? My name, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohit Sani. I'm the general manager. Me and my wife are the owner. And okay, thank you. The wife is. Okay. And your wife is with yes, you? Yes. Okay, so we have the uh, application in. Mr. Gilbert, I don't know if there's any other comments. I have it at page 40 to my colleagues. And does anyone have any questions with regard to this? And Mr. Gilberto, let's let, let you begin. Sure, certainly, just to respond to your question, Madam Chair, um, I did not have it in there, but I have talked with the police department and they have uh, no objection to the license being uh, issued by virtue of their uh, standard review of the candidate. <coughs> Excuse me, it's not a candidate. They are not applying for an alcoholic beverage license, and therefore they do not require our civil thing, civil fingerprinting bylaw to be implemented. <coughs> Excuse me. This application coming before you is a long time in the making. I know that there's been multiple months worth of work that have taken place down there, and I think some of you probably have seen the uh, the brown paper up on the windows as you guys have gone through the work. I've spoken with uh, the public safety director. My understanding is that the health director has been in communication with folks um, from Nick's place and that um, they will soon be a candidate for a final inspection. So while they don't have all of their permitting in place, 
as is the custom, your vote is subject to all regulatory department approvals, which means that we still need to finalize and get their, most significantly, their food permit from the Board of Health. But they are in that process and have been for multiple months at this point. Okay, great. Does anyone have any <coughs> questions? None? Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, so you're the general manager? Yes. So who is the, who is going to be the owner? So me and my wife, my wife is going to be the owner. So you're, you, you are the owner and the general My wife is the owner, oh, yes. Thank you. Have you done this kind of? Yes. Uh, I've been doing since I was 16 year old. I've been helping my father. Uh, I started when, uh, in 2007, my father owned a restaurant. I used to, I started from a dishwasher, then the kitchen guy left, fry later guy left, so I, I went through all those positions. Great. Now me and my wife, I want my wife to have the owner. Thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez, any other questions? Nope. All right. Just a comment. Do, yes. Chair. Comment. Wish you nothing but success. Yes. You know, and Thank you It's much. been a long time reopening and, um, again, Congratulations for your, uh, thank you. thank I hope you. your investment pays off and I'm sure the community will support you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It took us two years just to, uh, two years just to get through everything. To get to this point, yes. two years. Uh, the last three days since this meeting, I was very worried. All right. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to grant the common particular license to Nick's Place, 6 Washington Street, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Stugo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Good luck. Congratulations. Thank, thank you very much. We look forward to it. Thank you very much. All right. Next order of business is license renewals, which we're grouping together, I believe, the first, the first? Four. Four, I will be recusing myself and turning the chair over to Leanne as I have Oh, I'm sorry, I have a hand raised by Mr. Gilberto. Was that wrong? No, no, I, I was going to do when you finish. Okay. okay. I ask to be recused from the vote due to family members working in um, the establishments or having recently worked in the establishments, and which I believe are part of the grouping. Madam Chair, through you, um, we have 14 pages of license renewal motions that were separately uploaded into the share file folder for this evening's meeting, as was indicated in the meeting agenda notes. Excuse me. Um, so uh, they're in a separate attachment. You see them, the motions that we should be considering um, while the chair is present would be those who, that do not have the number two after them, and the motions that we would consider without the chair would be those that have a number two. And that's to indicate the second version of the same groupings. Does that make sense? And I think Not at all. But <laughs> it just says that the ones that say two here, you can't vote for. Okay, and then those are, one, those are the ones you're going to take up right now, Mr. Studo? I can, or I can save those okay. for the end, whichever well, chair. Well, I already turned the chair over to Mrs. Okay. Gonzalez. Then. So she'll have to call for whatever she'd like to do. <laughs> well, let's just chair. keep rolling. <laughs> I don't know where that, I'm trying to find that other. Um, I just had to get out and back in and look yeah, that's what I did. I'm trying to exit yeah. out at. Uh, Upper left hand corner, I think, if you're in the current one. Well, they were already separated out for the purposes of making the motion. They are. Yeah. Right so, so I don't need to look at it. Okay. I believe Mr. Studo has in front of I have in the order that they need to be. I'm ready to go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Studo. Uh, Madam Vice Chair. I move to renew the following common particular all alcohol license to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements for BNR North Reading LLC, DBA Horseshoe Lounge, Dos Lobos LLC, DPA Potbury, Ales Brewery and Kitchen. Okay, I have a motion second. by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. Gonzalez is aye. And the chair is recused. Mr. Studo? Madam Chair, I move to renew the following Sunday entertainment license to expire. Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following Sunday entertainment license to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Those Lobos LLC, DF. 
EB Apothecary, Hales, Brewery, and Kitchen. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walnut. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Gonzalez is aye. And the chair is recused. Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following automatic amusement device license to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Those locals, LLC, EP, Apothecary, Ales, Brewery, and Kitchen. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo. I have a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Vice Chair is aye, and Chair is Question. Uh, for this one here, it says the be the chair of the board of select, so it'll be the vice chair. Did you would fill in on this one after? Sunday in June. It says Kate, please. Yes. But she didn't vote for this. She's recused. She's recused. Uh, the vice chair side. The vice chair. Okay. That's the Sunday entertainment license, Mr. Sudo. Yeah. Thank you. Nope. There's one more, yeah. Okay, Mr. Studio. Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following common particular licenses to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Starbucks Coffee, number 19845. Dos Lobos, LLC, DBA, Ales Brewery and Kitchen. BNR North Reading, LLC, DBA, Horseshoe Lounge. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studio, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mr. Dollar is aye, and the chair is repeated. You can come back now. That's it. That was the floor with. Okay. Um, I will turn the chair back in. Okay. Next, and our next motions are the approvals of the license renewals for several which we can vote together on these. Is the motion to approve as a grouping? Yes. Okay. For the list. Great. For each one. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following common particular. Am I saying that right? Victualler. Yes. Victualler. 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 <laughs> English is my second language. That's another uh, year for clerk now. No, <laughs> no, no, all license, all alcohol licenses. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements, Young Young Brothers Inc., DBA Ginger Gourmet Restaurant, Kitty's Restaurant and Lounge Inc., China Cuisine Inc., Jim's Restaurant Group LLC, DBA Joe's Fish Seafood Restaurant. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following common particular licenses to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Dunkin' Donuts. You are muted. Oh. Thank you. Those would like you to unmute your microphone. You can press star six to unmute. You are unmuted. Dunkin' Donuts, North Reading, Maine, LLC. Dunkin' Donuts, Shauna Donuts, Inc. The Hornet's Nest, Captain's Pizza, the Lobster Claw Seafood Zinc, Andrea's House of Pizza, Young and Brothers Inc., DBA Ginger Gourmet, Dunkin' Donuts, Holy Donut 7 LLC, Four Pats LLC, DBA Subway of North Reading. Wayama Group LLC, DBA Mario's Restaurant, Kitty's Restaurant and Lounge, Jim's Restaurant Group LLC, DBA Joe for Seafood, Restaurant China Cuisine Inc., Molly Store Inc., DBA Ryer Store, Beyond Bagels Inc., Papa Gino's, Wendy's. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. 
Mr. Studo, Mr. Studo, on, on one of these that you signed, you signed on Mrs. Gonzalez's signature, so, so just re-sign it. Okay. Or I signed on hand. Oh, all right. Yeah, I signed first, so. Just re-sign. <laughs> I, I own that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Oh, I, I, on I'm two of, on three of them. Well, there's two lot. There's another line. You need your glasses on. Okay, let's re-sign these ones. Okay, so they're nice and neat for our our licensees. Okay. Um, I feel like we're in school. Mr. Studer, do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to renew the following common pick of wine and malt beverage to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Wayama Group LLC DBA's Mario's Restaurant. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Aye. My pen died. <laughs> see, I thought he was on there. Put your glasses down so you can see oh. it. <laughs> See? They're not just no, there for decoration. The you know? They're not just there for decoration. My second pen. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is that I mean, it's on day? both lines, actually. Thank you very much. Then he might need the glass. Just, he needs to resign. This pen's not one. I think it might line. be actually a little. He can't see it. And then the colleagues can. Now that's perfect. Sorry, Madam Chair, I have what a million here. Okay. Are you, do we, are we all set with licenses at no, this point? No, no, there's okay. more. I'm just, I'm sorry, I was trying to catch up on the. Okay, so Madam Chair, I move to renew the following. The Class one licenses to expire January 1st, 2023, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Brian Ducek, DBA National Sales, Alconian Subaru, Bobcat of Boston, Inc. You go top or bottom. And our motorsports. Okay. Second. Mo motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. Madam Chair. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, the record can show that I will be recusing myself from any discussions and votes and abstaining in relation to Class 1 and Class 2 auto licenses as I have a family member who holds in Class 2. All Class 1 licenses automatically get Class 2, so therefore I will not be participating. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary is recused. Do, do we have any further discussion on the motions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's four in favor, and Mr. O'Leary is recused. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following Class two licenses to expire January 1st, 2023, subject to all regulatory department requirements, Honka Motor Vehicles Sales LLC, Nika Inc. DBA Route 28 Motors, Brian Ducek, DBA National Sales, AJ Motors Inc., PT Auto Sales Inc. Motion by Mr. Studo. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is that four in favor? Yep. And Mr. O'Leary is recused. Madam Chair, I move to renew. The following class three licenses to expire January 1st, 2023, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Ryan Dutrek, DBA National Sales. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following automatic amusement device licenses to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Andrea's House of Pizza, the Loyal Order of Moose, Kitty's Restaurant and Lounge, Papa Gino's, Cowabunga Entertainment, LLC. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. <coughs> Madam Chair, 
I move to renew the following fraternal club all alcohol license to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Loyal order of moves. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Are we all set with licenses in no, this? No, we got we got more, but I might as well just send these down this way. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following package stores all alcohol license to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. 211 Lowell Street Corp, DBA East Gate Liquors, Paradise R2 and DBA New England Beverage and Redemption. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following package store wine and malt beverage licenses to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Christopher's Market, RSS Convenience Inc., DBA Convenience Plus, Joe's Quick Marks MA, LLC, DBA Speedway of MA, Molly Stores Inc., DBA Briar Stores. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Aye. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following jukebox licenses to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Lowell order of moose. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Those are that for the license that we do appointments, but okay. we need to just make sure that everybody signed everything. Yeah. So we're passing these along, but we're going to move on to our next order of business, which are appointments and reappointments. Mr. Studo. Yes. All right. And that sounds. One second, I just want to make sure that one's missing. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's done. No. Okay. Well, I'll check them after. We'll yeah, I think, yeah, I think that, I think uh, I'll Mrs. Try Mrs. McNeil's probably going to check them out and make sure yeah, we job. signed <laughs> everything <laughs> properly. And if we didn't, she's going to call <laughs> us back. So, uh, Madam Chair. I move to reappoint Marianne McKay as town treasurer for a term to expire on December 31st, 2022. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to appoint Stephanie Cohan as member to the board of registers for the term to expire April 1st, 2024. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Uh, again, this was a uh, recommendation by the Democratic Town Committee as required uh, by statute, uh, forwarded to the town clerk, and uh, we unanimously recommend her appointment. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Mr. <coughs> Mr. O'Leary, her name again? Stephanie Cohane. It's a roll call name vote. So motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary. Stephanie Cohane. Mr. Walner. Stephanie Cohane. Mr. Studo. Stephanie Cohane. Mrs. Gonzalez. Stephanie Cohane. And Manu Pelli is Stephanie Cohane.
that it for, for no, a there's more. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to appoint the following individuals to the Mobile Home Rent Control Board for the terms listed below. John Minion through December 31st, 2022. Larry Brown through December 31st, 2023. Lydia Real Costa through December 31st, 2024. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary, let's hear from you. Yes, we actually have, uh, uh, this has been a, a long dormant uh, board. Um, it was instituted a couple of decades ago. Uh, again, mostly oversees the um, uh, licensing of the two mobile home parks that we have in North Reading. So we've had a recent petition by one of the owners to increase the rent and part of the um, requirements are to have a hearing before the Mobile Home Rent Control Board. So we are very fortunate to have these three individuals who are willing to step forward and uh, fill the void that we have. Um, on the recommendation of the town clerks, we have to stagger the, uh, the appointments. Most of the letter raise up at the same time. And so, uh, so Mr. Mannion, we're recommending for the one-year term, Mr. Brown for the uh, two-year term, and uh, Ms. Real Costa for the three-year term. But again, we appreciate their willingness to uh, step up and serve and be called into action rather quickly. So I uh, recommend uh, the appointments. Thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Mr. O'Leary, on the motion. John Mannion, Larry Brown, Lydia Real Costa. Mr. Walner. John Mannion, Larry Brown, Lydia Real Costa. <coughs> Mr. Studo. John Mannion, Larry Brown, Lydia Real Costa. Mrs. Gonzalez. John Mannion, Lydia Brown, and Real Costa. Real Costa. And Manu is Mr. Mannion, Mr. Brown, and Ms. Real Costa. Yes. Okay. Hillview Commission. Like everybody wants to be on this. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of people. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination. The following names for a reappointment appointment to the Hillview Commission for terms to expire on December 31st, 2024. There are two openings. George Stack, incumbent. Lou DeFranzo, incumbent. Matt Dagle. Michael Robert DiNapoli, Brian Gilbert, Theodore Haggerty, Peter Jackson, Carol Mason, Nicholas Masse, Nick McPherson, Kristen Sullivan, Francis Tonaguso, Thomas Ward. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary. There's never a shortage of people willing to be serving. <laughs> That's which is, great. Which is actually a good thing. Uh, but it's. Uh, Again, we have a lot of, uh, it, it, what I've explained to most of these people is that, you know, if you don't get it, doesn't mean somebody else beat you up. You know, we only have two vacancies and uh, two, two positions, and their applications are on file for three years. And, uh, but I will be recommending uh, Mr. George Stack, who is a longtime chair of the uh, Hillview Commission. Uh, this has been his passion of baby since inception and before, even, uh, when they had the study committee. So George is uh, dedicated a significant amount of time, effort, and energy up through and including today when I spoke with him about some other issues that are facing the Hillview Commission. Uh, and it's certainly deserving of, of reappointment. Uh, Luda Franzo has been a resident attorney on the, on the board. He's been on for a number of years now. Uh, been significantly involved with uh, a lot of actions and is a member of the subcommittee now trying to uh, fill the building itself in the facility. Luda, uh, we, we couldn't afford his, his hourly fee if we had to hire him. Uh, but a tremendous uh, asset in addition to the commission that I can strongly recommend the reappointment of the two incumbents. So, Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Stack and Mr. Oops. Mr. Stack and Mr. Stone. Okay. Any further discussion? Name, it's a roll call vote, name vote. Mr. O'Leary. George Stack, Lou DeBronzo. Mr. Walner. George Stack, Lou DeBronzo. Mr. Studo. George Stack, Lou DeFranzo. Mrs. Gonzalez. George Stack, Lou DeFranzo. And Manupelli is Mr. Stack and Mr. DeFranzo. Madam Chair, I, I move to appoint David Doucette as member of the Cable Advisory Committee for an indefinite term. 
Second. <laughs> Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. I know we have two liaisons named to this committee, but is there it's, any it's debate? The and <laughs> is there any debate on? <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. He's well known. And okay. Recommended by that. Okay. On the motion, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Mr. Doucette. Mr. Walner. David Doucette. Mr. Studo. David Doucette. Mrs. Gonzalez. David Doucette. And Manu Kelly's <coughs> Mr. Doucette. Madam Chair, I need to place a nomination the following names for a reappointment appointment to the Historical Commission for terms to expire December 31st, 2024. There are two openings. Christopher Hayden, incumbent. Les Masterson, incumbent. Matthew Page. <coughs> second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Wall, we'll hear from you. Uh, I don't think Matthew Page is supposed to be on this. Okay. We hadn't talked to him, and I haven't heard word that was on with him. So I'm good with the first two. So you're recommending Mr. Um, Hayden and Mr. Masterson? That is correct. Okay. I think they still have to list them. Although, they still do oh, okay, I'm sorry. Still okay, I'm Everybody sorry. Has to be I'm sorry, I misunderstood okay. because we were discussing this today. That's yeah. Right. yeah. All right. So it's the two of them. Yes. Less, less, Masterson. Thanks. And but, but, but when we have okay. when Mr. O'Rourke, did he? I, I know he moved out of town. He um, was on Patrick O'Rourke. Yeah. You're talking about. He's on the Historic District Commission. Okay. This yeah. is the. That's what I see him on. Historical Commission. And he's saying, yeah, actually, it sounds like he's going to say no to that. But we're not ready to do that. Oh, okay. No, I don't want Mr. Rook moved up. Mr. Page bought the house. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry for the confusion. No, no problem. Okay. Any further discussion? And on the motion, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Hayden, Mr. Masterson. Mr. Wal uh, Mr. Walner. Mr. Masterson, Chris Hayden. Mr. Studo. Christopher Hayden, Les Masterson. Mrs. Gonzalez. Christopher Hayden, Les Masterson. And Manu Pelli is Mr. Hayden and Mr. Masterson. Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following names for reappointment appointment to the Martins Pond Study Committee for terms to expire on December 31st, 2024. One opening, George Conjano, Jr., incumbent. incumbent. He's our chair. He's good. We're happy to have him, but he wants to do it again. Thank you. So and they've been having success. Did yes. we have a second to the motion? Second. Motion and second by Mr. Suda, and our liaison is recommending the Mr. Caggiano. Caggiano. Okay. Any further discussion? On the motion, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Caggiano. Mr. Walner. Mr. Caggiano. Mr. Studo. George Caggiano. Mrs. Gonzalez. George Caggiano. And Manu Pelli is Mr. Caggiano. <coughs> Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination. The following name for reappointment appointment is member of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the terms to expire on December 31st, 2024. One opening. Vincent Ragucci. Incumbent, Rebecca Griffin, Thomas uh, Kiselek. Second. There's a motion by <coughs> Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. We'll hear from you, Mr. Studo. Um, I'd like to nominate Vincent Raguchi again. He's done a great job, but more importantly, uh, everybody in this board's aware that we have some pretty important things that could hit the ZBA at any point on multiple things. Um, but especially the 40 Elm. So I think having uh, a trusted person that is familiar with this process is uh, definitely gonna benefit the town. Any further discussion on the motion? Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Ragucci. Mr. Walner. Mr. Ragucci. Mr. Studo. Vincent Ragucci. Mrs. Gonzalez. Vincent Ragucci. Manu Pelli is Mr. Ragucci. That's it. Our next order of business. Okay, so for there are still, I just have to make a, a board service announcement. There are still more of these, so if you could reach out to the remaining openings so that we can have this all squared away by next meeting so that we can get any terms that are about to expire fulfilled. Hopefully we can reach out and if you're having trouble, um, maybe that's an indication that that individual may not be interested in serving, so reach out to either Karen, Mrs. Marlin, or, or Mr. Gilberto for some other citizens who checked off the box for, you know, give me a citizen's activity book. Karen's been really great, uh, and Mrs. McNeil, about giving us this information and 
make, reminding us to make sure we have these squared away. So, next order of business: vote to ratify the North Reading Administrative Staff Memorandum of Agreement. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, thank you. I'll give a brief overview of the pending agreement, which would be for a three-year term beginning July 1st, 2021, expiring June 30th, 2024. Uh, it's an agreement that includes some uh, reforms within it, including um, language clarifying the uh, complete agreement or zipper language that's in there, which uh, makes clear the contract is the exclusive statement of the party's rights uh, between the town and the union. I will uh, also note some, uh, some other items that are identified for modification in terms of the language. Uh, some language to <coughs> excuse me, update the uh, existing discrimination clause, some language to <coughs> clarify um, provisions relative to seniority, specifically as it relates to layoff, and also to uh, clarify the process for uh, promotion language that would make clear how, the, uh, how promotions are determined. <coughs> excuse me. I'll also note uh, some modification with regard to um, the some positions that are currently um, identified as eligible for stipends in the agreement to make clear um, the terms under which uh, the, those positions are uh, eligible for their stipends and also the classification under which they are treated within the contract. We also identified some language that clarifies um, how we fill vacancies and specifically how uh, positions are temporarily filled within the unit um, from one grade to the next. <coughs> Excuse me. More significantly, I will note um, that this uh, agreement will um, end eligibility for uh, end of career sick time buyback for employees hired uh, after ratification. Um, with a couple of uh, identified um, sections for vacancies, which has actually already been filled since the kind of agreement was reached. That's a significant reform within this unit. Uh, I think anyone who's been following knows that we've been slowly but surely reducing the dollar amount for the sick time buyback within the unit, and we're able to actually eliminate it for uh, so-called new hires. Um, you, uh, for those who don't know, there was an attendance bonus program in here. I think the past two years have taught us that we don't necessarily always want folks coming to work when they're sick, present company excluded. <laughs> For those who don't know, that's why I'm wearing a mask, because uh, you have a cold. Um, but we've uh, modified that language in there as well, which uh, provided a financial incentive in the form of a um, uh, time off uh, for uh, staying um, home, uh, for coming to work when one might have been ill, or for not, for not missing work. <coughs> it's also some language that clarifies um, the relationship between the town and the union as it relates to uh, group health insurance, which is a fashion in which we provide insurance to all of our employees. And then finally, I will note the financial terms uh, of the agreement, which call for a 3% um, wage increases in each of the fiscal years, as well as the uh, addition of a uh, step uh, at the top of the existing grid um, at the same interval as the existing steps effective July 1st, 2021. So I know that was kind of long and interrupted by my coughing, but I do want to provide just a quick summary as I normally do. Thank you, Mr. I believe Gilbert. the motion has been prepared. Well, I'll call for the motion prior to discussion. Mr. Stewart, do you Madam have a Chair, motion? I move to ratify the memorandum of agreement between the Town of North Reading and the North Reading Administrative Staff for the period of July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2024. Motion by Mr. Studo. Is there a second? Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Now discussion. Any further discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Madam Chair, I will be voting in opposition to this motion and it is not to diminish the work um, of these individuals. They are certainly deserving of, of what was negotiated in good faith and I applaud my, my colleagues who were part of the negotiations uh, as I expressed in relation to uh, from a strategic standpoint. I had some issues with it uh, to the extent that I find it necessary to vote in opposition. These people are truly deserving of what they're going to, going to get, assuming it's going to be positive. Um, I fully support uh, uh, their efforts and their work and their dedication to the community and appreciate it very much, but at this particular time I cannot support the contract. Thank you, Mr. Leary. Any further discussion? I second what he said. Okay. 
So that's a ditto for Mr. Studo. Okay. Um, and we're going to take a vote. Mr. O'Leary? No. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? No. Mrs. Gonzalez? Yes. Emmanuel Pelli is yes. And I just want to thank the, the members of the team, the, the bargaining team, and thank the bargaining unit for coming to the table and agreeing to those changes in particular that uh, the change with regard to this being the only agreement <coughs> between the town and the membership that's appreciated, that's worth its weight in gold. All right, we're moving on to, it's got to be a short report because it's already 810 and you're coughing away, so we need to get you out of here so you can, you know, get some cough drops <laughs> and, and kick some off some tea seven and minutes. some rest. But we'll let you talk a little bit, Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, only two items. The first is that uh, we were pleased to be able to open the yard waste drop off center over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, for residents who may not have completed yard waste pickup. Um, as anyone who's watching the weather may know, we may see some snow this week. If conditions are favorable, we'll look to reopen the center for one last weekend this upcoming weekend, but we probably will not make a decision until um, at least Wednesday when we know what the weather brings in terms of uh, snowfall. Uh, but uh, we ask folks who are interested, just keep an eye out uh, for uh, both our website and for social media. And we'll also blast email uh, this termination um, should we de decide to do so. I will also note for anyone who can't um, make it down to the yard, we have one last yard waste pickup this coming Saturday morning. Items must be bagged or bundled, uh, paper bags only, um, and out by 6.30 a.m. Um, and then the second item I will note for those who are following is uh, Senator Tarr and Representative Jones have worked hard to ident identify four uh, earmarks in the American Rescue Plan Act funding that was, um, that came forward to uh, the state, um, the state giving out both that and some other funding that I believe is a residual from the previous fiscal year. And we are optimistic that when the bill is signed into law that there will be four earmarks for uh, the town of North Reading, uh, which we'll review further once they become law. But we're certainly optimistic for that state funding. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any questions? Old and new business, Mr. O'Leary. Other than, I want to thank the administration, DPW Director, for addressing the, uh, the need for getting rid of the yard waste for an extra week or two. I had a few people inquire. I even took advantage of it myself, so I appreciate that very much. Uh, other than that, also, Madam Chair, thank you. Okay. Mr. Walmer? Good, thank Mr. you. Mr. Studo. Mrs. Gonzalez. <laughs> All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay. Madam Chair, I move to adjourn. <laughs> second that. Motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So the secret is starting at 5. <laughs>